why would I buy this 1990s piece of shit for $450 that had problems with the clutch master cylinder, the brakes, the paint fading and cracking on every bit of the car, a cracked dash, screwed up seats, 211,000 miles, and pretty much mismatched wheels on every corner of the car. This one happens to have a five-speed manual transmission. Very hard to find. In fact, this one took me over six years. Well, because it's an Acura legend, and those are really hard to find, especially in a coupe with a manual. Come on now. And this is in 1991. This is the second generation Acura legend, but also the first year for the second generation. So the fact that it has a manual is really hard to find. A coupe, also even harder to find. Currently in the US, only 10,000 registered sedans are on the road and less than 3,000 coupes are registered on US roads today. So it's really cool to even be near this car, own it, whatever. I have been looking for one for so long and up until a couple months ago, I finally found one that was in the middle of nowhere on the way to the Oregon, the West Coast. Um, it was sitting in someone's backyard under some trees and they didn't know how to work on it. It was a Chevy guy. He mistreated the crap out of it. He even told me he was going to cut the roof off and turn it into a derby car before the clutch broke. So I pretty much saved this car. Now, why did I save this car? Because it's so stupid rare. Um, I guess I would call it the sister or the brother to the NSX because it shares a lot of stuff with the pre-facelift uh, NSX. The car is very rare and I cherish it dearly. Um, why did I get this one though? Well, because it was the only damn one I could find in the area in my price range. Not everybody has 15 grand to go buy a 36,000 mile Acura Legend from your grandma. This is what I ended up with. I do have a lot of plans to completely tear apart the car. Um, I'm going to pull every suspension component, the engine, the transmission, the interior. Uh, I'm going to be stripping it down to a base shell to completely redo everything. So everything that's done to it right now, don't worry about it. This thing's going to look pretty when I'm done. But being a manual Acura Legend Coupe, especially the first year, this happens to be a dark, dark, sparkly blue color. I don't know the name of it. I haven't looked up the code yet. The interior is also blue, which is very rare. I remember from like the 88 Honda Civic wagons being blue interior was very rare. To be honest, it was very hard to come by in the beginning, let alone a luxury car with a blue on blue. First year, the rarest option in a coupe and a manual, which is very, very cool to see. But why did I choose this car? Why didn't I go get a GS300 or something like a Beamer or some piece of shit Mercedes? Well, fun fact, this was that competitor back in the day. Acura just came out in 1985 with the Acura Legend, the first gen, the first one that came out, had a 2.5 liter V6 single overhead cam engine, made 151 horsepower, and mind you, in 85, that was a decent amount of horsepower, even for a car, and they squeezed it into sedans and coupes back in the day. More of them were manual, because back then manuals were more common than today. Um, even this generation, there was a lot more automatics than manual. Um, today we have rarely any manuals, unless you're talking about a Honda Civic Type R. And that car started the whole snowball of all the imported vehicles trying to be luxury cars. You know, of course there was already Mercedes, the BMW, the Beamers, you know, they always already had their 3 Series and their 7 Series. And, you know, like the 750 IL that Tupac got shot in, which was uh, six years newer than this car. But this car was only half of that. I mean, of course, you know, that's years later. This car MSRP for $39,800 with all the base options. This exact kind of car. The model that this is, the transmission, the interior, the color option. It was this car, which also competed right with a 3 Series BMW of the time in a convertible, which was $38,000 before upgraded options. Maxed out, this was $39,800. In today's money, that's around $72,000, $71,000 due to inflation. Thanks, the president. Car to come across. If you had one back in the day, you were a pimp. You were a dealer. You, you were a gangster. You, you had a business. You were a businessman. You walked around with a suit and suitcase every day of your life. And if you had this on the strip, you were something. This car was something. Because it wasn't just another BMW. It wasn't just another Mercedes. It wasn't a Cadillac. It was an Acura Legend. Of course, Acura had their Integra. That was more of their sporty coupe, luxury coupe. This 
was their luxury car. They made it in a sedan, and then they made it for your sporty weekend cruise, your coupe. That's why I love this car. It has so much history for being in its famous drive-bys, the famous rappers, you know, Ludacris has one. It's a goldish Seattle silver colored sedan. Fun fact, Acura even redid that entire car for him. Put kickers in the back, redid the interior. I believe it was wrecked and so they had to change out the door and repainted it. They put bigger wheels on it, got the Rumbo big brake kit on it. Really spiffy car, by the way. And a couple of my top favorite people that have Acura Legends. Lou, you're pretty cool, bro. I've seen your turbo sedan. That thing's sick. I'm sorry to hear you're taking it apart. It was a true legend in the legend community. Not many people that I know have ever turboed one of these things. And the fact that you had to put so much money into it and everything was pretty much custom because, well, we had no aftermarket community for these things. Let's be honest. Maybe there's a couple body kits, but those are pretty rare to come by. Anyways, dude, props to you. That was a pretty sweet, awesome build. If you guys haven't seen it already, type in Turbo Legend on your keyboard on YouTube. You'll end up seeing it there. It's black. It's like the only one on YouTube and body style being the second gen. And my other top favorite, Tyson Huggy. You're a true legend enthusiast, probably one of the biggest ones in the world. I know you have that Acura SLX SUV, which are really, really rare. I believe you have a couple Acura Legend coupes and sedans. I know you have that like 560,000 mile coupe. I believe it was a six-speed manual. Of course, my days of dreaming about this car are kind of behind me because I finally got one. But Tyson Huggy, you deserve an award, bro. I'm sure you've had plenty in the past, but really keep the legend name out there. There's not a whole lot of legend enthusiasts because not many know what that car actually is. Or why it should be is what it is. But you know what? The car is what it is, and it's an Acura motherfucking legend. That's why I picked an Acura legend. So happy I finally found a coupe. I've had a lot of manual Accords, Civics, Del Sols. Only one Integra. I don't know why. I'm just not a big Integra fan. Every guy that I met that has had an Integra is kind of a douchebag. I'm not saying that everyone that has an Integra is a douchebag. Okay, well, most of you are. Suck it up and get over it. Eh, but it's not me. But not everybody is, okay? This is an Acura legend. Thanks for watching. You know, there's going to be a lot more stuff in the future. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I might have rambled on a little bit, but I'll hopefully edit those parts out. And I'm rambling on now. Uh, shit. Anywho, thanks for watching that Honda channel. More to come. I don't know why I have an Acura, but I'm in the Honda channel and I post a lot more Chevys. Hell, my intro video is a Chevy. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Peace.